Okay, here, what you're about to watch is a live stream that I did um, a few days prior to what you're seeing now. Um, I did the live stream, it was my first live stream. I did the entire job, job on a live stream. And of course it ended up being two hours and 20 minutes. So I edited that live stream down and hopefully you can make something out of this. This is uh, how to install a barn door style door uh, in an area that um, has limited access. So here we go. Uh, remember it's an edited down version so some things um, seem out of place or out of time but here we go. Okay, here's uh, our next project. Here's a project that I'm working on. This is the girls' room. I'm going to spin you around. And this is the girls' room, and it's a small room. We have two uh, toddler girls in this room. It was originally, uh, it's, a, it's called a bedroom. I would say it was probably... A, and it's a mess now because they've been in here playing but i think it was kind of uh you, it was, i know that it was used as an office so um the problem is this wall is small and we needed a bigger wall so we didn't so because of the design of this room you'll see we don't we have one wall that has a window on it we have a small wall because the room is small and it's angled. So because it's angled, you have two walls that are small and two walls that really can't be used. This one has a door on it. This one has a window on it. If you, if you have a door on this closet and you open the door out, it's in the middle of the room. It's, a, it's always in the way. We didn't have a good place to put their dresser. So temporarily, we took the door off of this uh, wall we put the dresser inside the closet now this is a really nice closet uh, it has it has uh, this little nook here that makes for real nice organizing and everything um, so it's a really nice closet but uh, we put the dresser in there because we didn't have a good wall it gave them more room if we put the dresser in there the door was no good because anytime you opened it it was in the way so here's what we're doing. We're going to finish the rest. We're going to take this. We're going to take this uh, dresser out. Um, we're going to take the dresser out. I'm trying to get you a better shot. We're going to take this dresser dresser out, and we're going to finish the shelving on down about halfway. We already have the shelving, so we're just going to put it in this closet. That allows that'll give us space to put uh, their clothes and things on shelves, and then we'll have room in the bottom for storage or bigger items. Um, but because we have always had this weird door on here, you know, we didn't really know what to do. So, th this next project we're going to be putting a sliding uh, barn door on here, and what that's going to allow us to do is to remove this casing. Uh, just the door trim is that what we're going to remove. I'm going to move the television um, bracket to the other wall. And there's going to be a rail on the top. And so we will have a barn door that slides open. The shelf will be gone. And the door will slide onto the wall and back so that'll give us a door that's usable that doesn't come into the room and it'll give us some room inside the closet it'll it'll pretty much solve the whole problem that we had in this room the ideal thing to do would be put a pocket door in here but you can't put a pocket door in this door in this closet because the closet stops right there because the back side of this closet is the foyer closet the the entrance to the house the um, coat closet so that that backs up to there so there's no way to put a pocket door in here because you would interfere with the other closet that would be the ideal thing to do would be put a pocket door in there but the next thing that would be great is to put a barn door on here 
Now, I think the barn door look and the barn, that old barn look, I think is played out. I don't like it. They're putting it on TV stands, they're putting it on entertainment centers, people putting it on their cat kitchen cabinets. I think it's totally played out. I don't like it. But I do like the fact that it makes this area functional again. So I am going to use it. Now, it may not be a real rustic looking uh, barn door like door that I put on there, but it is going to be that rail system that allows this to slide. So here we go. That's where we're going to start on this thing. There's what we're going to be doing. Here's the project. We are putting this barn door. This is a barn door style door on this closet door. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because it's a very small room. And when you open the door, um, it opens into the room, of course. And when you open the door, it blocks off so much of the room and it's hard to get into the closet and do anything. So I need a door that gives us better access. So can't put a pocket door here. That also requires a lot of work. So we can't put a pocket door here, but we can put a barn. This is a barn door style uh, door. I really don't like this look. Um, I think these barn door things are kind of, they're played out. They use it on furniture. They use it on doors and uh, it, it's kind of a style now. I really don't like it. I'm burnt out on it. Um, but it's the perfect solution for this application. So this rail now holds the door and the door slides on that track. And it's supposed to be a really easy fit, uh, retro to make one of these. I've learned that it really isn't. It's harder than what they make it out to be. Uh, the measurements don't kind of add up and uh, whether you need a door frame or you don't, I took, I've already, if you've I've already posted part of a video, I took this door frame, the original door frame off and I replaced it with a flat, with a flat frame, flat piece of wood and painted it and caulked it, uh, to give it more, give the door more clearance on here. So, um, that was the idea. Now this door see I'm gonna look and see how much field of view I'm getting door is the door that came off of it and you can't use the door that comes off because think about it it fits inside this opening and you need now because you're gonna be sliding it you need a door that's bigger than the opening so actually this door should have been a 32 this is a 30 inch door I should have got a 32 and it's standard that they come in eight in 80, 80 inches. Um, a normal door, like this door, seventy nine inches. Seventy nine inches. Now the, the new door, I think, is eighty four, and that's standard. Yes, it's eighty four. So now we have a door that is thirty seven inches which covers that opening up and some, and is much taller. Um, now, where the rail is at now, that is where the instructions told me to place the rail. And that's where I placed it. It won't work. Uh, if I go by those instructions, this door will not work there. So this rail has to be raised up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take this all back down and mark where I'm going to put this at. And I'm just going to go up two inches from where we're at now. And I can see where the door, where this door, as it's there. Now I got to check and see if you can even see what I'm doing now. This door, if I take it, if I take the rail up two inches, let me measure it again. Two inches. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be about right. 
It may even go up a little bit more than that. The message that the sound was coming through. So here we go. Down, Ooh, I hate doing that too because I have a little girl in the other room. She's asleep right now, but she hates the sound of these things. She hates the sound of impact wrenches. So I hope she's not hearing. Thing I noticed about this uh, this finish on this uh, on this rail and on the bolt, uh, any type of wrench mars it up pretty bad. So afterwards, you have to take. Uh, I took a magic marker uh, sharpie, and that's what you have to take. And you'll have to use that to. Uh, straighten those up because they're it mars them up pretty bad. It's just not a real good that sound you hear that's the that's the spacers that you have to use on these things. You have to I'm show you the spacers. This is a really easy system. I would say anybody could do it, but it's not as simple as they make it on the instructions. Because I have 150 videos on this channel of making things, showing you how to do things, and I went by their instructions and it's wrong. So uh, evidently it's not as easy as they say and their measurements are wrong so I'll get this out of the way so all I'm going to do is raise this up two inches but that's a lot of work that's going to be involved in fixing where it was now I didn't like I didn't like the way it looked. From here in the room, the rail looked crooked. It looked like it was wrong. It was in the wrong place. If you stand back where you're at, where the camera's at, it would have probably, from there, I know with looking at it, it looked correct. I don't know in the camera if it looked correct. But it is correct. It's straight. But looking at it from here, it always looked like it was put up crooked. So I was going to try to make some adjustments. And maybe... Um, it got dark in here all of a sudden. Maybe uh, kind of trick the eye, just move it up a little bit, even though that'll throw it off, at least it would look correct. And that's what you want to do. It doesn't have to, things like this don't, then it, it, it needs to be square because you want it to roll correctly, but you also want it to look correct. So if there's a way that you can kind of run that line in between and still have it work correctly, but kind of trick the eye a little bit. That's what that's what I want to do. Don't like the light in here. This is not the greatest light. I have some better ones. But that's the one I brought up. So I'm going to see what that looks like. Not too bad. Actually, as I'm looking on the camera, The whole room looks crooked in the camera. That door looks crooked. So that's what's throwing everything off is, uh, it looks to me like the right side 
needs to come down a little bit but I will hit it with a level and then go from there so I'm gonna mark these things two inches up and then run a line with a level across it that's the bump stop for the see this this made for a lot of work for me I'm going to take a look at what these so we're in wood here and I know that's because that's the door frame I really doubt two inches up there's going to be wood I think I got lucky with that but I'm gonna anyway I will um, measure two inches up mark my spot and try again uh, I have this really cool uh, stud finder that I got this is a Walmart dial um, it was a little bit expensive I think for being a heart heart is the brand that Walmart sells uh, although they're a very good company they're a really really well-known uh, maker of um, locks padlocks and saw blades and hardened tools and they they teamed up with walmart and they came out with this line of tools that you see in walmart and everybody thinks because they're walmart and they're white they just seem everybody thinks they seem cheap they're actually very good tools they're very good tools look up heart heart has a really good name um, they're a really old company and they're a really respected company, but they got to deal with Walmart. So just because you say sell them at Walmart doesn't mean they're not good. So anyway, I bought this one. Uh, it's a good stud finder. It comes with a little pencil that hides in the hides in the top of the stud finder so you can mark your studs. So that's, that's pretty cool. So the process for this thing is just to hang the rail. And after you hang the rail, which I already did, after you hang the rail, um, it's just putting the riders on the door. One reason we're doing this is because we're going to put shelving inside the closet and take this, take this dresser out of here. And we'll have shelving in the, at the top, and that'll give us more room at the bottom for shoes and things like that. So it'd just be better to have this type of door on here. But process is to put the rail on and then to put the riders, the door riggers, on the door. Now I've already done that once with this door and, and the measurements that they gave me were wrong. So I'm going to go with I'm going to measure it myself for the actual door that I'm putting on. And I'm going to show you where they, where they show the measurement. And actually, I will show, I will double check that to make sure. I'm going to set the door here so that I can show you where the measurements are going to be. Now, when you hang the actual door, I have a few more on. I'm watching um, so when you hang the door it shows the door where's the door at shows the door actually shows the top of the door and shows putting the rollers on the door and I don't know if you can see this but I'm gonna show it to you this is where it shows in the instructions it shows it right here and uh, measurement M is the distance from the top of the door to the center line of the middle bolt. Now, if you go down here to M, M is three and three quarters inches. Now, if I went three and three quarter inches, I end up like that. And that is too far down. So... It's wrong it, it doesn't work and I went and I went to look at an example of this door hanging 
at the place I purchased it at, and it was not three and three quarters inches here. It was only two and three quarters inches here. So the instructions are wrong. So I'm gonna to have to make my own measurements and that scares me a little bit because I'm not absolutely sure uh, what that measurement's gonna be. Okay, I'm gonna measure up two inches from where we're at. I'll set my tape measure a lot when my lock's not working. That's just my luck. Big fancy uh, Stanley wooden. It's pretty cool. He gave that to me. He also gave me a. Uh, he gave me a. He gave me a laser level, which I have also. Which would be good on this. Okay, look. That is dead perfectly on, on the bubble. I'm on the lines and it is right on that bubble. Now I'll try it down here, I'll move it down. It's right on that bubble there. So once again, like I said, I had this thing up and it, from the perspective of coming in the door and looking up that's right on the bubble from that perspective the rail always looked like it was crooked but it wasn't you see there it was not crooked so now i'm going to just get some idea using the uh stud finder so I could understand them not watching right now, but it'll make, a, it'll make a good video for later when I get it edited down. Now, it looks like we have a stud here. You can see that. That tells me there's a stud all the way across there. Actually, there's a double stud, maybe three. And as I'm moving across, actually it shows me as having something across here no there we go we have uh, something there okay this one's gonna be a problem it looks like don't show any doesn't show anything there um, As I move over, okay, we're going to have a stud there. So we're going to have a stud here and we're going to have a stud here. We're going to have to put a, probably put um, an anchor there. I hope I only have to use maybe two anchors and the rest in the studs. Because this door is heavy. This new door is very heavy. So we have a stud there. Stood there, but that's not going to help us. And we have a stud right on our hole. And for those of you that don't have a stud finder, um, everybody needs a stud finder because if you're hanging pictures, you need a stud finder. And you need one that shows electricity and uh, water things like that because you don't want to go putting uh try to hang your picture and then put it into an electrical line or something like that this one shows electricity also shows it right here it's a yellow graph so i'll let you know if you're going to be hitting some electricity and so my point i tend to ramble a lot uh, my point is Everybody needs a stud finder because everybody hangs pictures. 
and everybody does some of this type of work. So get a stud finder, preferably a nice one because you want you don't want to have any questions. I have three stud finders in my garage, and I had to go buy this stud finder uh, last week because they didn't work. They don't work. And I, ha I had to be assured that this uh, I was going to be able to find the studs before I drilled these holes because I've done it too much in the past, drilled holes, and there was nothing there, and it causes problems. There uh, they might come in at any point to get a toy or something. So, um, All right, there's the mess I got to fix. No sense in worrying about that yet. Need to get this uh, rail hung. It's straight. So I'm going to go right off of uh, what I have there. Just going to go directly above where it's at. I hate to have to fill those holes in. I hate the fact that I made holes in that wall. Um, and uh, I'm going to hold the door up again against those uh, new hash marks and see where that's going to put the door and make sure that I'm going to have clearance on the bottom. It should give me plenty. I'm looking at this propped up right where it's going to be. And it should give me that should work. Now the television was on this wall. I had to take the television down and uh, patch a hole there. I just posted a video this week on TikTok and Instagram and uh, Twitter. I'm on all social media. But I posted, posted a really cool video this week on quickly how to, uh, how to fix those holes in your wall that are in odd positions where you don't have a stud or something to get to. So you might check that video out if you have any kind of holes in your walls that you need to... Uh, you need to fix. So here we go. I'm going to put these in individually. And the way I found to do it, I gotta remember what I did with this. Here they are. I found that the best way to do it was to put them in. Uh, Put them in with the spacers. And use the washer. That way you get your depth, or some of your depth. You get a little bit of your depth. Because you can't hold this. If, if you're doing it yourself, you cannot hold this rail up and put these in at the same time. Um, so you're gonna to have to put them in, put them all in, get them lined up, and then uh, take them all back out. And then one at a time, put the rail up with the uh, spacer and the, now, I think I drilled these first the last time. I know I did, I'm not gonna, yeah, I need to do that. Yeah, I drilled them first the last time, we're gonna do that again. We're going to uh, put the spacer up, drill the hole, and I have my drill here. That's why the drill's out. I have my drill bits here. I have the bit that is exactly the right size for this. Uh, this is a lag bolt that had been down a little bit. So let's check it again. Check it down here. Check the center of the holes. Center of the holes. Okay, so it is off just a little bit. It is off. It's just a little bit off. You see that? I don't know if you can see that. 
But if I go to the center of the holes, no. No, it's not. It's in the bubble. But could go down just a hair, I think. I think that would make it look correct. I think that would make it look more correct if that end was down a little bit. I think that's the issue. So I think that's what I'm going to do is kind of bring this in down just a little bit as we're putting this thing up. So that when I post to my channel, I would have had different angles. I like to do that. I like to have different angles on my videos, different shots, different angles of the same shot. Makes it more interesting. Makes it much harder to edit, but it does make for a better video, I think. So I'm going to start putting the anchors and the rail up. This is all there is to it. First one's a little bit hard to do. putting this up if these light bolts go in at an angle it can throw you off and can actually throw the rail off so you have to really be careful as not to uh, even though the we know the rail the holes we know are level If the bolts going in, if they are at an angle, it will throw off the level of the rail. It will actually uh, get all it out, so that it will be kind of uh, tilted out, and it won't. Uh, I won't let it. I'm going to have to be real careful here as not to do this to uh, What can happen is this track is crooked between the, the wheels. It will tilt that on the rail. That'll still work. It'll just smoothly that won't make for a good job so here's what I was talking about hanging this by yourself why it can be dicey I did it again I have to have this tool in my hand before I start because I have to hold it put it in at the same time this is not going to be easy to fix that drywall, neither. Uh, it's not in a good spot to fix. It's going to be hard to do. Okay, so I'm going to have to make sure that this thing is uh, level. I'm going to put pressure on it. Now, grab. Now, I'm going to check to see that it's level. It's a little bit off. It's going down a little bit, but I have a lot of screw, to, a lot of bolt to go. So I can move the angle. I'm 
All right, so there we are. Those are both very straight. Those are both very straight now. So we're moving right along. Let's get another one. Get this one in, and then I'm gonna step out away from the camera. And I'm actually gonna go take a look at the video from another feed. When I do these live streams in the future, I will do some, I hope to be able to do some where I answer people's questions and people are live, online live and asking questions on the chat. Projects that they need help with, I have questions about. And I'll be able to answer some questions. And so I want to see what it looks like on the other side. That's where I will be answering questions and things from in the future. So the rail is up. Well, it's hanging. It's not up. I have two more to do. I know that that last one down there is going to require an anchor. I have uh, all my subscribers. And 20, uh, 50, all my subscribers and 50 additional. But I'm thankful that they're uh, letting me just learn the uh, learn the live streaming process. Now this is a live streaming job, but I will also be doing live streaming Q and A sessions where I answer questions people have upcoming projects and things or wanting to you know, drop things um, uh, in the middle of jobs, especially working. Um, Moving my arms over my shoulders. Must be bad shoulders. So it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna get this one in. Maybe by some luck, uh, I know it's not gonna happen, but that far end one is not gonna have a stud. And the reason I know that it's not gonna have a stud is because there's a closet in there. The back side of that is a closet, it's in the foyer. That's a coat closet in the foyer, and there's no structure there. You couldn't have structure there, because that's where the coat closet is. So, that is going to require um, additional work. And I'm so concerned about drill on that door because I only get one shot on this door. I get one shot and it's over. So after I get this home, I am going to take the brackets off the door and just hang them on the rail and take a look at it. So that is, that's much different. It is, for like I said, it's yawning out a little bit. And it's not this time. Which is much better. So I'm starting to be thankful that I did take this thing down and move it because it looks like it's going to just be a better application all the way around. This rail is so secure because I've hit a stud on all of these except that end one. It is so secure that um, it really doesn't matter that that's going to be a, uh, that down there is going to have an anchor in it. Um, the amount of uh, leg bolts that are in it now, wet more than enough, way more than enough to hold this thing up.
yeah, that's really good, good solid uh, application. Now. I'm really happy with that. Now I have a bumper on here. There go. This is a bumper here. And as I was looking on the uh, ones at the store, the bumper is up. Now in the in the pamphlet the instructions the bumper is down that's where i got it from so once again the instructions are not uh, correct so let's do this last one Those ones that are up as a, an example, they were just a little bit under the rail. That wasn't possible before. So I'm going to look at those measurements again that they offer. Now, that's sitting on the floor. And if you look now, if you look now across that rail, again, it looks crooked. Now it might be crooked from, it might be, there might be a different measurement from that ceiling to that ceiling and that's what's throwing us off. The room might just not be square. Because I put a level on that and it's correct. So, the rail's correct. This door might look crooked when I get it on there, but it's not. So, okay. I'm going to look at those measurements again. Uh, measurement I showed you. I'm going to see if you can see that. So, the measurement here, M, is three and three quarters. Put it up there. And you know what? That looks right on this one. What is the difference? Why did it not work before? Well, here we go. All right. Three and three quarters on this door. We'll put that center right there. So a quarter inch above that. My center is going to be a quarter inch above this, so it's going to be like that. Does that look right to you now? We don't get any. Don't get any. Yeah. Second dose. Yeah, and I'm still questioning whether or not there's room up here to get it on a, on the rail. Yeah, it's... Be careful because when you. Maybe a half inch, quarter inch lower, but not. It needs to come up to get it off the floor. Yeah, but. Yeah, I, I'm with you. See, if I, yeah. let me see where that's at, because if I went with that again, because at first it looked right to me. I mean, that, um, do you have a pencil? Yeah, um, inside here. I was just going to... Yeah, we can get some kind of idea. Um, here's where I'm... All right, both of them are going to be lined up with this. All right, that's where I'm going to put them. So the edge lined up with this. Mm -hmm. And then let's go down. Wait, is that where you're going to put it, you think? Right um, there? That would be the minimum. We're going to have to pull it up pull a little up bit. Get it off the floor. All I was going to do is put a outline so that circle. So by going you know down, fall. don't you bring the door up? Yes. Yeah. So... Yeah, so if we if we put a circle here, then I could just go down a little bit. Uh, yeah, good. You think? Right by your, let's see, you've got just three quarters of an inch, or not quite, yeah, right at three quarters of an inch. So you're at two and three quarters. Isn't that odd? Isn't that what I measured at the store also? Yeah. 
That's what I measured at so, the store. Yeah. So we're gonna have to drop it down at least a quarter of an inch, maybe a hair more. But not not no. down here where no, they had it going. No, 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 not that far. Because that didn't work on the other door. So yeah. Okay. So you know, drop that down a little bit. Do you want it over it's here? It's gonna be the same over there. Was well, yeah, yeah. Let me yeah. get it. Uh, line it up with the. Line it up with that edge for me. See them? Yep. About right there. So you think there and down? Now yeah. down a little bit. And down a good okay. quarter to half inch. Quarter, quarter to half? So you think? Yeah, because you got what, three quarters of an inch, a little bit more so here. Like here. Um, let's see. Let's look at that. Put that. Yep. Let's see. That's there. Put it there. That would bring it up. I would be tempted to. All right, all right. Is that your middle part or is that your bottom middle, part? All middle. right. I would put it right between those two. Middle between those two? Yeah, I would put it right there. Cause yeah. middle there, so that would be the circle. Yeah, that's, be the hole. that's what I'm thinking. All right. Cause that brings you down. So it's the bottom, the correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what do you want to do? Yeah, I could. Uh, let me. Uh, well, you can measure too. Well, I can go off of those and just, okay. I'll stick it on there and I'll circle it myself with the door all the way against the yeah. wall. Yeah, I wanted another opinion because yeah. I was getting ready to go with the figures they had and that would almost, the figures were are much better on this door. Yeah, they were better on this door. Much better on this door but, and they almost look right. But my question was getting it on there. Yeah. That was going to be the problem. That, yeah. there. Yeah. Hi, you. Okay. Good to see you. Thank Come you, on, visitor. Let's go. We have it down just, just inside the bottom of our original mark. And I think we were off on this one, so uh, there is our original mark. And I think we have the circle just inside it like that, but it needs to go over a little bit. And once I mark this one, I'll go to the other side and measure off the edge and make that one the same as this one. Now, we're not going by the numbers that the instructions called for. I went and measured this at the store. I heard one hanging. One of the one of the rail cars as a guide. Make sure I'm in the right spot. these on here and one thing I didn't know that I learned when I went and looked at these put on an actual door the nut goes See me? It's all right.
Okay. We're all in on it. Door is attached. Rail is attached. Hits here. Hits the frame. Now I'm really hoping that when I take this off that the door will then um, clear. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to pick this mess up, clean up, and uh, I'll give you a finished shot of it at some time in the future. All right. So there it is. Give you a little bit of a shot later. Okay, so here's the finished product I'm gonna show you. Now, one thing to uh, look at here is that um, I did put a trim strip on the door casing. I thought that's what you're supposed to do. They don't tell you in the instructions, but you can't have a door frame at all on these things. You have to have a smooth, um, a smooth frame. So I'm gonna to have to drywall this. Um, I guess the real way, way to do this is to completely take the door frame out. That's a much bigger job than I wanted to get into and I'm probably going to just drop, put a corner bead on and drywall this to the edge. Um, or look for uh, a better small, uh, very, very thin, maybe plastic um, trim piece. Uh, so they don't tell you these things. Um, they can't you can't have a door frame on these things i guess you could if you pulled the the rail out further away from the wall maybe you could shim it out but with the spacers that come with this job you cannot have a door frame so here's the here's where we're at with it take a look at it so there is the door Oh no, the lighting's bad in here today, and I don't have my extra lighting today. I don't have it set up. But there's the door, uh, pretty much finished. And I'll show you. Um, I had to take the frame off. And now it, it returns back. Uh, it's a very, it works really good. The door works really good. The bumps work good on it. Um, you'll see it returning back. It slowly returns back and has the bump stops to keep it from having a hard stop. Now, one thing I did learn, um, the girls were playing on the door and they were pushing it up. So there are some little bumps that, some little rubber bump stop stoppers that go on the top of the door. I didn't install those because I didn't see a need for those, but they're gonna have to be added. I'm gonna do that in a few minutes. Um, but so all that's left is for me to finish this drywall, which is not a big deal, but much more of a job than I want it to do. And they don't tell you about that before you start. So there it okay, is. Okay, that's going to do it for this episode. If you've hung on this long, you're probably a subscriber. But if you're not, please subscribe. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button and hit that notification button. You'll be notified when I have new content that becomes available. I hope you got something out of this video. It was a edit from our live stream, but maybe it will help you uh, doing a project like this. I hope so. And remember, they may do it another way, but that's the way I do it. We'll see you next time.